I just sleep here. My apologies. You're an ingrate, Howard, and weak. I'll pity you after I get my divorce. And when, may I ask, will that be? I'm starting it next week. Happy thought. Why a fire on an afternoon like this? What were you burning? Old love letters. Charlotte, Helen. Ooh. They're too smart to write. Incidentally, thanks for not stopping my bank account. At least I could buy a plane ticket to Seattle. That's why I left it. Of course. Gives your new boyfriend much more latitude. Who is he, by the way? When did you pick him up? Three years of misery too late. Good night, Angel. And don't forget to change your will. You'd hate yourself on your little pink cloud if you accidentally left anything to me. What did she say? Well, well, go on. I'm saddled with you. Maybe you shouldn't have sold him on taking me off Market Street. I've got you as of now. That's your desk you're sitting on. You got one week for your honeymoon starting Tuesday. <laughs> and the chief hopes I can teach you something. I doubt it. So do I. At least we'll be figuring a case from two different angles. Here. For me? Open it. One of mine? Janet wanted one of your baby shoes like Mom had fixed. We'll put them both on the mantle. Thanks, Ed. There's a lot of Market Street mileage on this. I'm gonna rest my dogs for a year. Rest them on your honeymoon. You got plenty of legwork when you get back. Oh, a gal called you a minute ago. Who? I don't know. She hung up. What'd she say? Nothing. Wouldn't be the one, would it? What one? The one that's been under your skin the past few months? Look, Ed, I know it's none of my business. You've always played your women pretty close to the vest. But why don't you find a girl that's good for you, like Janet is for me? Settle down. Reforming me? <laughs> that chance. This one's good for me. These are no good, but that's the way it is. All right, you don't have to tell me your name. See you later. Right.
Hello? Hello? Oh, Ed, I've been trying to reach you. You know you're not supposed to call me here. Ed, I've got to see you. Come right over. Hurry. Why, to have a drink with your husband? Oh, no, no, no. He's going to the airport. He's flying to Seattle. Listen to me. He's bought a gun. He's planning to kill me. I know it. There can't be any other reason. Wait a minute. You don't make sense. He's going to Seattle, but he's going to kill you. He is. He's never had anything to do with guns before. I can't find it, but there was an inspection slip on the floor in his room. He must have burned the wrapping. He had the door locked. Please, Ed. Please. Okay. I'll be over as soon as I can. salary now we can have an apartment what were you going to do with the mug before bed him down in your studio keep him in the closet come on celebrate with us ham and eggs sorry got some business blonde or brunette are you beautiful what's that have you been playing santa claus again something for the living room you can put flowers in it see you ed hi how's my working gal half I like it. Well, you're married into a mighty fine family. Part of the plan. If anything happens to you, I'll have a spare. <laughs> You took so long. The servants are out. I'm alone. I've been so frightened, Ed. Stop shaking. You're all right. I found the gun. I hid it in the closet. I'll show it to you. Maybe he bought it for me. Oh, well, that's not all I found. See this? There was a letter from my lawyer about a will. I know he's seen it because he put it back in a different place. Oh, he's planning something. What am I going to do? First, pour yourself a drink and calm down. Calm down? Is it a nice, calm feeling knowing that someone's plotting to kill you? Well, I remember them. It turns my stomach. And once I believed that he loved me. Oh, what a fool I am. He was in love, all right. Of money. My money. He worshipped it. He adored it. He loved it so much, he's ready to murder to keep it. It's murder, don't you see? That's what it is, murder. A big girl now. Cut out the tantrums. You're the only one. Now, where's that gun? I'll get it. Mix it a drink, will you? There's brandy on the table. No, Howard, it isn't there. I found it. Oh, let's give me that gun. You did come back to kill me. Go away from me, my daddy! Oh, crazy. I didn't know what I was doing. Didn't mean it. Hospital. Get him to the hospital. Slugs in the chest. I didn't know what I was doing. I saw the balcony door open. What do we do? I haven't anyone else. He drove me to it. Well, you know that, Ed. Well, you know what he was planning. He was planning to murder me. And say something. 
Think of something. You know the truth. The truth can get you 20 years. Ted, are you going to arrest me? Operator, get me the municipal airport. United Airlines. I'm trying to locate Mr. Howard Fraser, flying tonight to Seattle. Has he picked up his ticket yet? Fraser? No, it's still here. What time is he leaving? 11.50. Shall I page him for you? No, thank you. He's probably still in town. There's a chance. You'll help me? Oh, Ed, you won't get into trouble. Not if I can get him back to the airport. Airport? He set up an alibi for himself that's going to work for you. He checked his bag at the airport, parked his car in the garage, with the parking ticket would show he didn't use it again. But he got killed and robbed at the airport. Too bad he didn't stay in the bar, instead of wandering around outside in the dark. Have enough nerve to help me down to the car with him? Side. Take a sedative. Whatever happens, you don't know. Go to bed. Hey, wait a minute. There's a third slug. Don't let anyone in that room till you found the bullet hole and covered it up. him a civil question. He might at least have told me he didn't know. Davis, look! No. What are you doing here? Looking for green coops. Some guy got knocked off at the airport. Lucky you're driving a blue one. I could disappoint that blonde. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? She comes across with a bonded bourbon. Feed it. You're holding up traffic. Del Mar. Driver's license number Z81976. Okay, that's it, Bill. I'll have these checked at the lab for prints. 
Send me four copies of the report, will you? Sure, Colonel. Oh, Doc, Doc, uh, just a couple of more questions. What about time of death? Not less than two hours ago, not more than four. Monitory might make it more exact, but that's the best I can do right now. Okay, thanks. Uh, those blood stains on the shirt, did you notice the way they went in two different directions? So? Well, maybe he wasn't killed around here at all. Possible. Probably happened thrashing around before he died. I'm disappointed. No, 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 just checking. You're as bad as your brother. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. Uh, no more questions? No, no, not for you, Doc. Daddy, incoming American Airlines Oh, here you are, officer. I must say we're a little tired of this waiting. Aren't we, Ernest? Yes, indeed, dear. We have every desire, of course, to assist in the workings of justice. But we do wish they'd work more quickly. Well, lady, we'll try and hurry them. Now, Mr. Quinby, can you help us fix the time a little more exactly? I mean, when you saw the other car, discovered the body. Well, let me see now. I should say it was in the neighborhood of uh, 10 o'clock. What do you think, Muriel? Uh, yes, dear. As a matter of fact, it was exactly 10. You just looked at your watch. We were worried about meeting Gladys. Of course. 10 o'clock it was. We were to see a friend off, an old friend of the family. Second I see. Cousin. Thanks. Now, can you add anything to your description of this other car? Green coupe, you said it was. Medium size, not new. Unfortunately, I was on the far side, wasn't I, Ernest? Naturally, all I saw was a dark shape and the headlight. I'm afraid I can't help much more. It was just a car, green, of course, uh, and a coupe. Uh, I had a green coupe back in 1931, and it was... It was uh, in 1933, dear. You see, that was the year... Yes, that... yes, thank you. Now, was there anyone in it, Mr. Quimby, besides the driver? Well, let me think now. Uh, when I leaned out and asked my civil question... No? No, I'm sure there was only the driver. A man was. What did he look like? Well, just a man. Oh, Ed, uh, Lieutenant, uh, this is Mr. and Mrs. Quimby. They saw the... I know. Go ahead, don't mind me. Okay. Uh, what did he look like, this driver? Well, he was just a man. Uh, uh, he had a hat. It, it was pulled out. Is there anything else you noticed about him? Was he big, small? Impression, and mind you, it was only an impression. That he could be described as medium. Wouldn't you say medium was the word? Well, I. Well, I'm sorry, you didn't see him. No. What about his coloring? Was he, would you say, or blonde? I'm afraid I really couldn't tell you. I suppose, uh, as it can be described as, uh, well, uh, medium. Uh, the fact is, officer, I really didn't see him at all. Well, we won't need you and your wife any longer, Mr. Quimby. Thanks. You're sure we can be of no further assistance? Oh, we're only too glad to help, you know. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. So, the chief finally caught up with you, hmm? Yeah. Why don't some of these characters get knocked off in the daytime? I think I've covered everything. What would he bring up to date? No, I got it on the phone. This fellow, what's his name? And Fraser. Howard Fraser. Fraser. Was found outside the parking lot. His wallet near him. Empty. Was booked on the 1150 to Seattle. Quimby saw a car which might have been the guys at Brumpton. Right? Oh, no. There's more to it than that. Fraser parked his car here at 7. Now, Doc Munson says the latest he was shot was 10. That makes it three hours he was here at the airport. I can't figure out what he was doing here all the time. Eating, having a meeting a dame. Well, I don't know about dames, but I checked with the bartender and the head waiter. Neither of them saw him tonight. You've been busy. <laughs> no. Then come in here. No. It looks like robbery. But I can't think why a guy would shoot unless Fraser put up a fight. And he isn't a bit marked up. Anything else? Oh, uh, this is the night clerk. A telephone call for Fraser came in around 9.15. What was the call about? 
Well, the fellow said he was trying to locate Fraser. He knew he was going to Seattle and asked if he'd picked up his ticket. I told him no. He asked what flight he was going on, and I said the 1150. I offered to page him for him, but he said, never mind, if it wasn't till then, probably still in town. Would you recognize the voice? Have you heard it again? I might. Anything unusual about it? Sort of deep. Okay, thanks. You can get some sleep. Good night. Good night. Well, looks like you covered everything so far. Let's go on over to Fraser's place. Maybe someone there can tell us some more. The phone there yet? No, no, I was waiting for you. Thought we'd do better if we could catch them off balance. If there's anything to learn. You're learning awfully fast. I'm still trying to figure out what Frazier was doing at the airport for three hours. Why make it tough on us? What do you mean? This is your first case, kid. Don't build yourself up to a letdown. I, I don't get you. Look, this job's like most of them. You check leads, run them all down, you hit the right ones. <laughs> You've been telling me that for years. What street was it, Del Mar? Yeah. something I'll never get used to. Some of them cry, some of them faint. The ones who just look at you. Well, let's get it over with. Uh, I guess breaking the news is kind of rough. Well, think of Janet and how you'd feel. You, uh, you want to skip it this time, kid? I can handle it for you. Yeah, thanks. You sure it's okay? Sure. Lieutenant Cullen, police department. I'd like to see Mrs. Fraser. It's after one. I... It's important. Very well. Lieutenant Cullen of the police department to see you. I didn't want to disturb you. Please. I'll see him up here. Yes, ma'am. I can't start by ducking things like this. Do it yourself. that will see you upstairs. Wouldn't she rather come down? She said her sitting room, sir. This way. Lieutenant Cullen, Police Department. This is Detective Cullen. Why? What is it? Is anything wrong? It's... It's about Mr. Frazier. I'm sorry to have to break it to you this way. Your husband was killed tonight at the airport. Oh. No, he was shot. Shot? I'm sorry to have to question you like this, but... That's all right. If I could be of any help, won't you sit down? Did you know your husband was going on this trip? Of course. He was flying to Seattle. Salmon fishing. He often does. 
you know what plane he was taking? I... I'm not sure. He left before dinner. It was still daylight. What business was your husband? He wasn't in business. Just social life. Polo, all that. Did he have any... any enemies that you know of? Of course not. Everyone liked Howard. He was kind, thoughtful. Oh, I just can't believe it. I can't believe that anyone would do a thing like this. His uh, wallet was found near him with no money in it. But he always carried a lot of money on trips like that. I, I often warned him. Oh, please, where is he? Could I see him? He's, he's in the morgue. Sofa, quick. No pillows. Keep my head low. Feet up. Is, is she all right? Should we get a doctor? No, no. I told you these things are tough. That's it. Oh, I'm all right. Take it easy. I'm sorry. Is, is there anything we can get you? No, it's just... What? Oh, yes, about Howard being robbed. Well, maybe someone wanted to make it look that way. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Fraser... Did your I... husband mention an appointment with someone at the airport? No, he, he didn't say anything about it to me. Where does he keep his correspondence? Well, any letters or anything would be in his room across the hall. Mind if we have a look? No. No, no, no need for you to come. That lock on the French door, when was it broken? Oh, well, uh, it happened last week. We came home late. Uh, I'd forgotten my key. We didn't want to wake the servants, so Howard climbed the balcony and broke in. Well, Mrs. Fraser, that's that. We ought to apologize again for putting you through all this, but we had to. I know. We'll have to come down to the morgue tomorrow. Identification. Yes, of course. If there's anything else... If you think of any reason why Mr. Fraser was at the airport for three hours, let us know. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, but what does a guy do all that time? He didn't eat, didn't have a drink, didn't even buy a magazine. How did he fill in the time? Where was he? What did he do? Take it easy. We'll find out. Say, I felt sorry for the wife, didn't you? Uh-huh. She's sure the type you go for. Too rich for my blood. I feel sorry for the man, though. Hey. Suppose... Suppose the body was moved, the way I suggested to Doc Munson. Then the three hours would be explained, but... Better learn one thing. Never take a case to bed. Well, you beat Janet to that one. Look, Ed. I wouldn't ask, but this is my first time out. How am I doing? All right, kid. Do any better, and I'll be out of a job.
Both the bullets are 38 caliber. I'm not sure, but I'd say the gun had a short barrel. What about this? Hmm? No, couldn't possibly be that. Your gun's practically brand new. There's no record of it in this office. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot, Rush. All right. Well, that got us nowhere as fast. All right, we know the gun we're looking for. What do you want, a life-size picture of the killer? I want to find out more about Fraser and Mrs. Fraser. Why fool around with a gun? One minute at a time. Keep your coat on. Check the gun. You want me to put an ad in the paper? Very funny. Why don't you get smart and cover the pawn shops? Why, I thought pawnbrokers were supposed to report all deals with guns. They are, but they take their time. We can't afford to waste any. Okay, Chief. Hope this guy was dumb enough to pack the thing. Suppose he kept it or dumped it in the bay. Mailed it to his mother. Hey, will you keep out of trouble tomorrow? I've got to deliver you at the church. Ed? Yeah. Why haven't you called me? Is everything all right? I haven't had a chance. Whom do you want? No. No, no, this is 87, not the wrong number. Five minutes, where have you been? See Janet. I thought tonight was supposed to be strictly stacked. Yeah, but I, I had to ask her something. We're going to put off the honeymoon. Well, that won't be necessary. It'll only be gone a week. I can handle things when we get back. Look, Ed, this is my big chance. A good one. Maybe it is. Going to postpone the wedding, too? <laughs> no, sir. Mrs. Cullen, we got 14 hours. Paris, Rome, Singapore? Singapore. Andy, the signal says stop. Nothing's stopping us today, baby. your driver's license. Oh, it's you, Cullen. Yeah. I didn't recognize you all dolled up in the car, either. It's, uh, my wife. Ah, I heard you were going to get married. Lucky guy. Congratulations, Mrs. Cullen. Thank you. I was talking to your brother about it the other night on the bridge. Oh? When was that? Saturday night. <laughs> oh, so that's where he was. Yeah. He was headed for Sausalito with a big smile on his face. Tell me, did he have a girl with him? All along. Why? Well, he's, he's been holding out on me. Say, are you trying to get me to forget about this ticket? You're not going to give us one, are you? I have to. I know you're floating on air, but don't try it through intersections. <laughs> okay. <laughs> coming up. Rather go across the bridge? Santa Rosa? No. Feel wrong. I want to look at the ocean. All I want is to look at you. Aren't you tired of that? Would you rather be checking fingerprints? Guns? Look, Mrs. Cullen, crime in San Francisco can take a night off. killer's on the loose again. What makes you think so? You know the Martin liquor store hold up last night? Yeah? Killed the owner. Put two slugs in him, just like Fraser. They dug one more out of the wall. Same gun. They get the gun? No. But all three slugs match the ones out of Fraser. 
Have a look. You can't ask for better odds than that. The one on the left killed Fraser. The one on the right, Martin. Looks like we've got this character for both jobs, no matter which one we catch you on. Yeah, if you catch it. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Roger. Say, did you ever figure out the odds that no two guns would mark them the same? <laughs> You'd hate to count up to us by millions. Hello, Schneider. Ed Cohen. That uh, Martin job, who's on it? Olson alone, eh? Well, we're short-handed here, too. But I'm sending someone down to you right away. Good. Keep me posted. Where do you hide out? Been with Doc Munson, about Fraser's body being moved. Hey, you know that liquor store shooting last night? Yeah. Bullets were out of the same gun that killed Fraser. That's funny. What's funny? Well, it doesn't make sense. Dream on your own time, will you? This is a hot lead. Get down to the 3rd Precinct and work with Olsen. Right. When do I see you? Later, after I've cleared up a couple of things. Is anything wrong? Nothing's wrong. Are you still angry? Angry. About that phone call. I will be if you do that again. From now on, I get in touch with you when it's smart. So don't mess things up. Are we going to get away with it? Well, we've been getting the break so far. The ballistics boys found a new lead on the gun. You said the gun was in the bag. It is. I never thought it could happen, but it has. There are two guns, and they match. I saw the bullets. Light me a cigarette, will you, darling? Ed, would you marry me? You a cop's wife? <laughs> you want to keep on being a policeman? What else, Polo? I've got a lot of money, Ed. What's a million or two between friends? I'm serious. I just happen to love you. That goes double. And why does marriage appeal to you? You tried it twice. What makes you think it would work this time? What I did before doesn't prove anything. I've loved you ever since I've known you. Yeah, but I know you too well, baby. You change your mind too fast. And when you're through, you're through. I was trying to find myself. To build a new life with somebody else. That's why I've married twice. But you, you're afraid. You look so sure and you sound so... Watch that temper. Oh, Ed, let's get away from here. The South Seas, anywhere. I'd hate to be stranded in the South Seas. Do you think I'd ever leave you? Yeah. Find out anything at the airport? You know, the parking lot guy said he might have heard the shots and taken them for airplane motors warming up, backfiring. Didn't see anyone, though. Yeah, it looks like we'll get but nothing out there. That's your gun. You sure? Positive. Absolutely sure, huh? Absolutely sure. Woman pawned it. Uh, Mrs. Kappa, 2243 Ocean Front. Thanks, Rush. It's going to save me a lot of trouble. Let's go.
this a gun? It looks like, but uh, I don't know much about guns. He took it home, huh? Wait a minute. John, hey, Joran, John, will you please tell this man about the gun and what you said, please? Stop the sera, siamo venuti con Vieso, la gun era lì. Lui l'ha preso, io ci ho detto, Vieso, l'hai trovato, la prendo. You see? I got it. It's all right to go back to my work now? Not today, come on. Where are you going to take me? Home, your wife ought to be back by now. I told you by the boat. It's not there when we go out, it's there when we come back in the net. What time did you say it was? About 11.30. Keep it in English, please. When I come home, I give the gun to Mama. Yes, and I put it here in the drawer with my dish towel covered up. Anyone else know it's there? Oh, no. No, no one was here when we were alone when I put it in the drawer. And I tell her to sell it today for money to buy some new cook pot. Ah, you want to see my cook pot nice and new pot? Never mind. Anyone else live here? We have a boy, a needle. How old? Twenty. He was twenty uh, last Tuesday, three weeks ago. He did not know about the gun. No, needle never is in the kitchen. Only to eat. Where does he work? Oh, yes, no job now. No job now. But he's a good boy. Oh, he's educated. Nito is a gentleman. He speaks two languages. He's going to get a good job. He's going to make lots of money. What does he do nights? Last night, night before. Saturday night. Saturday night. He was here. All night. All night. For supper and all night. Where does he hang out days if he doesn't work? And now does he eat for the door to each other fall durante la serata? Where is he now? Night he go to school. And then he look for work. Now, what night did Nito have this gun? Nito? Nito did not know about the gun. Because he didn't know because when he took his revolver, he didn't know. No, no, no. You ask Nito himself to go to the club and ask for it. What club? Where? I don't know where. It's called a 322 club. He didn't know when he took his revolver. How could he have been there? He didn't have to go to the club. Ah, Lieutenant. Welcome. I haven't seen you for a long time. Must have been behaving yourself. Is Nito Kappa here? Nito Kappa? No, I don't think he's come in today. Does he spend a lot of time here? Well, Nito likes to play pool. What will you have, Lieutenant? On the house. Some other time. What does he look like? Well, he's... Hey, you back there. Hold it! <laughs> I didn't kill any liquor guy. That's still your story, huh? Go on, keep on writing me another two hours. You won't pin a thing on me. Okay, Nito, take it easy. This is all very friendly. I enjoy talking to you. You're an interesting guy. Have a cigarette. I got my own cigarettes. Well, light up and take it easy. You bet I will. Yeah. No, no, no. This is Andy. Hold it. Hold it. back. Yeah? Okay, send it up. Thanks. Nito, you're a peanut brain. You make stupid mistakes. What, for instance? We searched your room. 
found nice and clean, huh? My mother keeps it that way. Nice old polished brass bed. We hated to take it apart. Why do you suppose we found stuff down in the tubing? Two rolls of money. I want that dough at the track. Is this the money? How do I know? I don't mark it. Sure, you save it to buy those sharp clothes. While your mother goes around in a cotton dress. My old man takes care of her. You leave her out of this. Okay, you want it at the track. How much was that? 250 bucks. 500 was stolen. Who'd you split with? There wasn't any. Anybody else? I tell you, I want that at the track. An interesting story about this money, Nito. The man you killed left a widow. I didn't kill anybody. She told Detective Olson she knocked a bottle off the counter while she was making change for a customer. How would I know anything about that? A bottle of wine. Red wine. Spilled into the cash register. Still want this money at the track? Look at it, Nito. That's not my dough. You must have planted it. No, oh, sure. We're trying to trick you. But you're smart. You want to watch out. You don't get your story twisted and fall on your face. What were you doing at the airport Saturday night? Airport? I wasn't at any airport. Funny, your gun killed a man there. I wasn't there, I tell you. I've never been at the airport. This fellow you split with, has he got a car? It don't make sense. You haven't got a car. You asked me that. I know I did. But your friends have cars. Some of them. What colors are they? Who keeps track of the color? Black, red, gray, brown, take your pick. No green? No. Funny, every other color but no green? No. Look, Nito, we got you on the Martin job. Why don't you come clean on this one? What time were you at the airport? It's a frame. It's a frame! Sit down. You haven't got a car. I haven't got a car. Well, that's flat. But he killed Martin, yes. But why do you keep trying to pin the airport job on him? Why not? I don't think he did it. Same gun. But his father didn't find it till two hours after Frazier was dead. So he said, wouldn't you lie to save your kid in the gas chamber? Cap could have had the gun for months. He did do the friend. He had to have it. Took it out of Fisher Mark. Dumped the gun on his father's boat just so he could use it again for the liquor store job after the old man took off. Skip the parents. Look, if he got there for three hours. Look, will you throw out that crystal ball and stick to the facts? All right, then where's the money from Frazier's wallet? Why wasn't it stashed away in the same place? I keep forgetting this is your first case. You've got an awful lot to learn. Never blow your top at me. It's written report, stick to the facts. Okay. You're on official business. That's not what bothers me. Then what is the matter? Worrying about. It's Andy. I hate to keep pushing the kid around. Double crossing him, not when he's right. I'm glad it's only that. I thought you might be sorry you'd ever met me. You know any reason why I should be? Oh, Andy. Light me a cigarette, will you, darling? Come and open a window. There's nothing in here. Mix us a drink. I think I'm going to go home and turn in. Check on something Mrs. Frazier said. Why? Remember when we were talking about her husband? Yeah. Well, she said he went salmon fishing. Did we go 
because you know salmon fishing is closed till next season, you walk out on your pride? Yeah, but she lied, didn't she? But when you've been married a bit longer and want some time off, remember salmon fishing. What are you doing here? Well, I'd say she was your type, but I didn't think you'd start operating this fast. How you doing? I don't know. Maybe I tried to rush it. I only got to see her for a minute. She's in bed, doped up, doctor's order. Well, I, I guess I wasted a trip, too. See you in the morning. Police headquarters, please. Hello, Detective Cullen. Give me highway patrol, please. Hello, is Officer Blair there? Blair? Andy Cullen. Listen, remember you telling me about Ed's being on the bridge? What time was it? I don't know. Late. Yes, I do. You can find out from radio. The second all points broadcast on your airport case came through while we were talking. Switch me back to the board, please. Sure. Hello, Cullen again. Can you give me communications radio, please? Radio? Yes, Cullen. Second all point Saturday night? Hold on. Cullen? Now, there was call 28, 28, uh, in at 10.57 p.m. Thanks very much. some nice fat fingerprints on the shelves. He does when he reloaded. Look, Ed, I, I feel rotten. Mind if I borrow your car for a while? Want to go to the doctor's? Sure. Hey, you didn't have your first fight with Janet, did you? No. I'm going to have another little talk with Nito this afternoon about 2 o'clock. Will you be there? Yeah.
cooperate, but I can't afford to have important business. I said I want you to take a look at something. Yes, I know. Have you ever seen this car before? No. That is, uh, the airport. It is. Well, it, it was one just like this, I'm sure. What color is this? Green. It's blue. That's ridiculous. You mean to tell me that I don't know You're what... You're colorblind. Lying to him. He left the house this morning without even saying goodbye. What is it, Ian? I don't know. Look, you go on home. I'll find him. If he doesn't show up in an hour, give me a ring. Yes? Yeah. yeah. speaking. Uh, this is Lieutenant Cohen. Hey, did my brother find you today? Yes, he did. I want to congratulate you, Lieutenant. That was fast work. It uh, seems I misled you on the color, but uh, I'm sure it's the same car, or one like it. Have you uh, found the owner already? Hmm? The owner? No. No, we haven't found him yet. Take a cab. Keep Janet posted. She's home worrying about you. What did you do it for, Ed? Do what? Uh, Kill Fraser. You drunk? I wish I was. It was Mrs. Fraser all along? Sure can dream him up. Didn't dream up you telling me she was half doped in bed when I'd seen her at the window. Or you being on the bridge at 11 and tossing the gun off it. I wish it had gone in the drink myself. You know, if the same thing didn't happen to a lot of rookies, I'd knock your ears down. Give them one break and suddenly they're masterminds running around like hot-tailed beavers arresting the whole population. You're blowing your top again. Go on home. We're going into headquarters, Ed. Quimby identified your car. He's crazy. No, he's colorblind. Well, that makes fine evidence. 8,000 blue coops in the city and you get married to mine.
I've been working my way up on the force since you were in grade school. Do you think I'd throw that away on a sucker play like this? Yes, for one thing. A dame. You said she wasn't good for you. Look, you're my brother, Ed. I'd hate to send other guys after you. Okay, let's go and see the chief. Some guy, he's got to snap you out of it. <laughs> Keep trying. I'm pretty sure someone's there. Operator. Operator, get me police headquarters, please, quickly. What time does that flight leave? It's 7.25, sir. We can just about make it. Hold two seats. Name is Johnson. Harry Johnson. Thank you. Come on. Should we take my car? Gotta take mine. Andy. I'll get his hands in a moment. First get the radio room on the phone. It's on the floor. How in the world did Andy find out? He knows his business. Couldn't we talk to him, reason with him? I could make it worth his while. Andy can't be bored. I don't believe that. There's nobody can't be reached. All points, attention, all points. Be on the lookout for 
Lieutenant Cullen, homicide, and woman Lois Frazier wanted on murder charge. The couple believed heading out of city in police car, license 1G3744. Repeat, Lieutenant Cullen and woman Lois the airport's Frazier. Out. Honestly, Andy doesn't know him. Right. All right, honey, upstairs. Olsen said this isn't your case. Forget Olsen. What are you going to do? Ed knows he can't get out of town for a while. I've got a hunch I know where he is. Six ways out of town. We'd have a better chance if it were dark. Why do we stop someplace? Exactly. We're going to do that. You drive in. I'll get this out of sight. Shall I fix the gate the way it was? It's all right as it is.
Ed. Five minutes. Longer. I'm freezing. Grab an hour. Let's get in out of the wind. Of money, John. Light me a cigarette, will you, darling? Of course, dear. 